welcome to this episode of Fuel Talk from Cops Automotive Europe. Fuel Talk is a straight talking podcast series that on a bi-weekly basis shares valuable context around Cops Automotive Europe's latest news, insights and expertise. I'm James Davis and for this episode I'm delighted to be talking all about digital retail. And we have quite a roll call today from Cops Automotive. Uh, so starting off in terms of introductions, we're joined by Darren Sinclair, who is the Managing Director of Retail Solutions for Cox Automotive Europe. Hi, Darren. Hi. Uh, next on the list uh, is Didier Van Bauel, Chief Operating Officer of Modix. So hi, Didier. Hi, everyone. And uh, last but not least is Roland Schack, who is Chief Executive Officer at Cove Weavers. Hi, there. Hi. Welcome, gentlemen. I thank you all for your time, your precious time. Uh, this is the first time there's, ne- there's a a phrase in Britain is that, you know, you wait for one bus and uh, three come along at once. And, and this is the first time we've had three leaders on the on the call. So I think for an episode, it's, it's very exciting. We've got a lot to talk about. So without further ado, I'll, I'll, um, I'll crack on. So we're going to talk about digital retail. And I think before we start that, um, you know, we've, we've obviously, it's, it's fair to everyone as the audience to introduce, to make an introduction and introduce yourself. So should we start in the order that I've introduced you? So, Darren, if you want to start off, just a, a, a bit of background to yourself, please. Yeah, no problem. So, I'm Darren Sinclair. I've been with uh, Cox Automotive for uh, just over five years now, um, leading Modix originally. Uh, and then following the fairly recent acquisition of Code Weavers, uh, I became Managing Director of Cox Automotive Retail Solutions. Uh, so, the solutions um, retail solutions business includes both Modix and Code Weavers. For, for my background, uh, prior to Cox, I spent over 20, 20 odd years at uh, Auto Trader. So uh, I've been doing and uh, been involved in this side of the industry for quite a while now. Brilliant. Thank you. And Didier, over to you. Yeah, for me, a little bit different. 16 years at Cox Automotive, went through some Mannheim auction businesses and so on. But for the last more than 10 years, uh, you know, let's say at Modix or retail solutions part, um, yeah, taking care of all the teams and all the offices throughout the world from China till, you know, all the offices in Europe. So, yeah, that's that's it. Fantastic. Thank you. And last but not least, so Roland. Yeah, thanks, Roland Shack. Obviously, um, I've been with Cox now for about three months, about 226 days, I think. I checked before this meeting, so... Um, Yeah, so my background really is in retailing. So I was actually at a retailer for several years and then looked after um, business managers in dealerships. So got real experience of sort of facing customers across the desk, which I think is valuable sometimes, probably less so as we go through life, but but certainly gives you a context. Um, Started Code Rivers in 2001 and grew that to, to the point at which Cox bought it in March this year. And throughout that experience, we've been working on really what we started with was finance, but that is part of the digital retailing journey. And we've been working on that ever since. Yeah, fantastic. And we're both of you are going to come on and talk about Modix and Code Weavers independently. So that'd be great to, to pick up on later. Um, and certainly, you know, maybe a newbie, but certainly not in, in, in terms of the industry, as you say, which is, is right, really yeah. important. And you look across Cox Automotive and that's that's a trend that's key across the business, which is great, great to see, certainly on this call too. So, Darren, coming to you first then, um, digital retail, there's been a lot of talk about it. There's a lot in the press. There's a lot of talk about it in terms of the pandemic. Should we start off just by talking about what exactly is digital retail? What do we define it as? Yeah, uh, so really good question. Um, I think one thing I'd say to start with, though, is the pandemic's done, um, ha- has created uh, an acceleration of the speed of change uh, across digital retail, with many businesses having to transition from traditional sales towards digital retail. And I think that speed has caused some confusion within the market on what certain terms would mean. Uh, and that's something we've worked to clarify within Cox. So for example, we would say that e-commerce is a pure play digital business that relies on digital channels uh, entirely for the transaction of goods and services. Digital retailing actually has both physical and digital channels as the operations are not fully managed through that digital channel. And that means although a client can buy a car online, um, there could be transactions uh, and operations that are managed offline. Uh, And this is where we start to refer to the customer journey as being either multi-channel or omni-channel. So multi-channel simply means that the journey is not connected. So if a customer or consumer decides at any point to continue the journey offline, 
the retailer uh, may not have the technological or operational integrations necessary to bring that journey to completion. So simple terms, if you start your journey online and then you take it offline, it's very difficult for that retailer to really understand where you are. You possibly end up in having to replicate uh, the journey you've been on to date when you get to the retailer. Omnichannel, on the other hand, though, that just means the journey's connected and integrated. So the retailer has all of the info customers have entered online with a, with a view of any actions completed, and they'll be able to support the customer journey to completion from any of the business touch points online or offline. I hope Great. that helps. Yeah, no, it does, definitely. Because I think, I mean, coming to you, Didier, I think um, quite often in the same breath, you, you, you hear people talk about e-commerce and digital retail. And, and to Darren's point about how much of that transaction is, is, is you know, and where it's conducted. Um, how does that fit in terms of your world then? So, so is that something you're, you're, is that a frustration that you're and the team are encountering as well? I mean, it's, it's, it's very well said, James, that, you know, e-commerce and digital retail are absolutely not the same thing. They are closely linked to each other. What everyone knows, like e-commerce is like, you know, a purely digital business. You know, you're buying shoes, you buy them online, you can't go offline, you can't go to the, uh, to the store to, you know, smell and feel them, while digital retail is really like merges the both physical and e-commerce business. So this means that if we are thinking about car buying or, or buying a car online, there could be transactions which are just like uh, Darren said, uh, you know, operations managed partially offline. And so good automotive retailing uh, turns every team member of a dealership you know, into a digital retail agent. So they provide in-person assistance to all customers, but they also offer the help to the consumers who began shopping their, dealer, their dealer's website, on the dealer's website, and who use the dealer's online tools to move through the purchasing process to serve the customer better. That's my view of it. What's the difference between the two? No, fantastic. And, and just going on from that then, so in, in the term of chicken and egg, which came first, is this driven by, is this driven by the, you know, the motor industry as such, or is this is a response to consumer demands? Is it, is it consumer led? Is it technology led? Is it, is it, or is it a blend of a number think, of things? Yeah, I, th I think, well, the biggest <laughs> push re more recently has been the impact of COVID-19. And I think the, you know, it's been obvious that digital retailing is a requirement is going to be a requirement going forward and we've seen tentative um, approaches from retailers perhaps a little bit more enthusiastic from some of the OEMs over the over recent years but COVID-19 just you know hypercharged all of those uh, all of that change in the industry there, there was no other way to sell vehicles for quite a quite a while last year um, and so people were were reaching out and, and desperate for solutions that would help them sell uh, their solutions digitally. So I think that's been obviously a massive change in the industry. Whatever sentiment there was before, it, it's just all been turned on its head over, over the last year. But I, I believe that customers have always wanted to be able to buy cars online. They've always wanted that, that ability. And certainly if you look at, you know, as soon as they got the experience of sort of one click buy or going on something like Amazon, then people are, uh, must have been thinking, well, why can't I do this to buy a car? Now, the other aspect of that is the technology and the fact that, you know, if there's no technology there to facilitate it, then it just physically can't happen. So consumer behavior couldn't change until technology changed. I think we've seen the technology catch up over the last, you know, couple of years. It started to get more joined together. It's quite a complex process. Let's face it, buying a car, there are many, many moving parts. And, you know, that's part of what our job has been is stitching those parts together. Um, into a coherent um, solution that can be utilised to actually buy a vehicle. So until that's happened, it's been really hard for retailers, for customers, sorry, to, to actually have the technology to go and buy the vehicle. So now that that technology exists, we're definitely seeing customers' behaviour changing uh, as a reaction to that technology change because they just physically couldn't do it before, even though I think the demand was there. So uh, it's a combination of all those things together. But um, I really think that COVID-19 was in some ways a really positive thing for you know our industry and in that it, it's given it a real kick up the up the rear yeah and it's it's done that as you said as a consistent from a time perspective it's not a, an early an early adopter or an early to market everybody has had to face that challenge and i mean going down going back to yourself you talked about it in terms of 
how, how, how the pandemic's accelerated some trends. Do you see as we come out of the pandemic and hopefully in terms of return to some form of normal, do you see that, do you see that acceleration continuing? Do you think that that trend will continue or do you think there's a balance in terms of you know, almost what, what was being said by Roland there in terms of that consumer journey? Yeah, well, I, it's a good question. Um, if we if we do go back to pre-COVID, which I know is quite a hard thing to do uh, these days, we were already seeing consumer demand um, for there to be changes to the traditional way of buying a new or used car. Uh, you know, we did have early adopters who were keen to see um, engage engagement with businesses that had some form of digital retailing capability, primarily as simple as a consumer being able to reserve a vehicle, for example. The, pandze- the pandemic really accelerated that. When we look at the vast amounts of data and insight from within Cox, as well as from businesses such as Google, it kind of validates that consumer behavior was already starting to shift and this continued to shift with a huge acceleration towards buying a car online. Now, it was a natural shift in behavior due to retailers being closed, as uh, uh, Roland, Roland said earlier. Uh, and I think this has continued even now. It may have slowed slightly, but we're still seeing. Uh, consumers wanting to interact and transact and purchase vehicles uh, online now, even though four courts are open again. Um, and it, the, the key thing for me, though, is if you think about that change in in uh, consumer behaviour, you've seen an acceleration. That acceleration has created a need for manufacturers, for dealer groups, for retailers to actually change faster too, which has been an interesting shift in dynamic uh, across our market. Some, particularly a few dealer groups, they were already well on the way towards digital retailing pre-pandemic. They started to invest heavily in that area. And and I would say they held an early advantage. Uh, Manufacturers who've been very, or fairly slow, shall I say, to react, they also grasped the need for change. And yet we're seeing more of that change come through and beginning to wash out new cars, some new car models only being available to buy online, for example. And then I think back to Roland's point around technology, we've seen some technological changes. They create better omni-channel solutions for consumers. So it just makes that whole car buying journey more seamless, easier, and therefore more attractive. And that further shifts this um, increase in demand um, from a consumer point of view. So if I I try and summarize that, I I would just say, that also takes out some of the key pain points from the more traditional purchasing process, things like negotiating the deal, which we know consumers find a, a challenge with, both in terms of the process and the time it takes, the paperwork, et cetera, et cetera. But if I summarize, for me, um, we've seen a huge shift in demand. Technology is further shifting that consumer behavior. Uh, and that, I think, are the things that have in part driven this con- increase in consumer uh, behavior and demand. Yeah, no, that's, that's that's great. Very interesting. And just before I, I move on then, so but having all of you on the call is always great. And I, I love to understand, as, as the audience do, about different markets and how things behave in different markets. So, so Darren, in terms of, because of your view, clearly, on the European perspective, pan-European perspective, but but also with, with Cox Automotive in the States and other um, continents around the world, is this is this a trend we're seeing across the globe? Or are certain markets, certain cultures of consumer at different stages of that of that journey, would you say? Yeah, I, I think if you put it simply, you know, we support clients globally, um, and it's definitely a trend that we're seeing across the board. There are some markets that are engaging with digital retail and digital retailing tools faster. So if you look at just Europe as a, a small uh, view of that, our view would be that um, a complete digital retailing capability, the demand for that is going to be really high in the UK, probably higher than in some of our other European colleagues uh, other European markets. And that's, you know, the, the maturity of that market for finance calculators, finance applications, integrated solutions with lenders, probably slightly more limited. So you're seeing the demand is growing, but they're probably a little bit further behind in terms of capability. And then you kind of look across the water to the US and they're actually, I would say, further ahead of us. So that they've been playing in this digital retail field for a lot longer and therefore there's more consumer interest, there's more uh, retailer and dealer interest, and it's certainly they've got better traction and moving slightly quicker. So it's a, it's a global trend, but markets are moving at different speeds at the moment. 
Yeah, fantastic. Um, okay, so let's obviously we've got uh, two leaders of, of specific businesses that provide tools, as you've quite rightly talked about pain points, Darren. Um, Didier, coming to you first, and, and obviously retailers need all of these tools to facilitate, of which Modix is a is a best in class leader of, of providing those. Um, how how specifically does Modix help customers in terms of that that you know seeing the digital journey and, and moving along that path? So the, the, the view of Modix, you know, onto these changes is, is that the digital retail model allows car buyers to decide how they want to purchase a vehicle. I think that's one of the most important parts. And so basically it's choosing a blend of digital tools and channels that help drive consumers' confidence, because that's one of the important parts if you are buying a car online is the confidence that this is the right car and the right product and so on. And so it directs the car buyer through the purchase funnel towards completing the transaction. So basically, Modix is providing the dealers with, with those tools uh, around this confidence and then to drive them into that uh, sales funnel, such as digital advertising solutions right at the start. You know, think about Google uh, results there, 91% of the people looking for a car start online, which is growing each year, of course. And then, you know, once they are in uh, in the, let's call it the internet, looking for a car, that's where we try to catch them immediately. And then, of course, the confidence comes into, into play with, with interactive imagery, you know, so to make them confident, have big images, 360 videos, all that kind of stuff. And then, yeah, the ability to part exchange, finance and reserve a vehicle all the way till you are completing the transaction. So giving the consumer the ability to choose their preferred channels results in a great car buying experience and reflects well on the dealership and the automotive brand. That's our goal with our tools. Fantastic. Um, and, and so coming to you, Roland, in terms of Code Weavers, again, um, the latest acquisition from ourselves from Cox Automotive and um, relatively still finding your feet, but of course the business has been established for, for many, many years. Um, is that you're seeing a similar thing in terms of code weavers because because of course there's slight differences and nuances with code weavers being agnostic in the industry yeah i think i think the the, the difference is that so we see ourselves very much as the engine and the pipework of, of the digital retailing environment so so we knit together as i mentioned earlier the, the various elements of the of the buying journey so whether that's part exchange whether that's finance whether it's value-added products delivery all that sort of stuff into a a coherent journey for the customer um, and the idea is that that it within that journey you can plug and play various providers and um, ideally they'd be cox automotive providers but you know they could could be any kind of provider into that into that journey and then you take either the the pipe work or you take some of our front end solutions and then that can be then delivered any anywhere for a digital retailing experience so yes yeah, it's, it's about knitting everything together and powering that powering that journey that can be utilized wherever it's needed so that, that's a big part of what we do i think we it's about creating a seamless journey for the customer but really more importantly in some ways for the retailer because i think the retailer gets a little bit neglected in this people create really shiny lovely front ends for for the customer great fantastic but then when it gets into um, you know communicating with the customer and joining the whole thing together uh, you know, let's let's take let's take it on board the fact that unfortunately, or fortunately, depending how you look at it, customers are going to want to speak to somebody physically and have interaction with humans, um, probably for the foreseeable future. So when I was at Virgin Cars, they they moved offices seven times because they didn't think that anyone would actually want to speak to them because they had a fantastic digital retailing solution. Well, in reality, yes, there are some people that much prefer not to speak to anyone, but the majority of people want the comfort and there are nuances with the buying journey that mean that they need to interact with people. So it's about knitting that human interaction together with the digital journey and all of those digital interactions. And we see that as absolutely critical in providing a single solution that can help the two-way communication really between consumers, retailers, irrespective of what channel they're in. Yeah, that's interesting. I think as DA said, <laughs> everybody has to be that works in the dealership has to be an ambassador for that digital retail journey and accept that that some you know one customer to the next customer will be different in terms of how much they want to to interact in those stages of the journey so yeah no that's really interesting and a great analogy in terms of the, the pipe work i like that so uh, that, that's clear in my head so um, i'm sure it makes it clear for everybody 
Um, so, so just sticking with you then, Ronan, in terms of, of COVID, you, you talked earlier about um, you know being being a new a new arrival in the Cox Automotive family. I think it was third of March we announced the the, the acquisition, um, which seems like no time ago, and, and no doubt for you it's time flown. How, um, if you can share with us, how how are things progressing in terms of you know the work that you're doing with Cox Automotive and, and your clients? How are you seeing it sort of unfolding in the coming months? Um, it's very interesting. I've got to say that. I think um, obviously it's the first time I've really been through the process of, of being um, taken over by another company. So it's 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 an interesting experience. I think one thing that's becoming really obvious is that um, there are opportunities, you know, a, a significant number of almost endless opportunities for our, our, our businesses joining together. I think, you know, obviously we've got a really, really close synergy with, um, you know, the, the space that we work in with Modix and the two businesses, you know, will be providing joined up solutions for, you know, very, very quickly and very soon you're going to see those in the market. But, but I think, you know, the wider Cox group has also got, presents a whole series of opportunities for us. So we are super, super excited about those opportunities. And I think um, our real <clears throat> skill that we're going to have to ex exhibit over the next sort of six months or so is picking the right opportunities because like anything, you know, you've got, you can do everything, you can do nothing. It's like picking the, app, the opportunities that are going to give us the most value. So um, I think in the UK, our job isn't done. We've got a lot of things that we need to continue within the UK. And, and, and I think, you know, pro providing these retailer tools um, is a big part of what we're doing. Automating systems, making it easy to onboard, all that, those sort of things are really important for us in the UK. And that's a, a really key focus for our business. But, but obviously one of the key advantages of, of working with Modix and with the wider COTS group is that we can now start to look at how we transition and take our services that we, and the skill and, and expertise that we've gained in the UK and seeing what of that is applicable in other markets throughout Europe. So you know, we're probably going to focus on the larger markets initially, but, but certainly we want to test and see what do we need to do in order to adapt our platform to, to really add value in those markets. So that's going to be a, a key driver for us going forward. No, brilliant. And as we said earlier, the, the, that agnostic nature, I think that's important to get across. I was talking to a customer and explaining that. Um, and I think some, sometimes, you know, people think, you know, in, ter in terms of that Cox Automotive family, and, and as you said, you know, from a perspective of you're now looking at markets as far away as China, that, that benefit that Cox Automotive has being a global business, uh, as you said, uh, Roland, you can scale into that and, as you say, harmonise with other, with other products and services and brands that we have in, in, in the yeah, I think I think it's for me. It's a really super exciting thing because I mean, everyone looks at <clears throat> digital retail. If you actually look at it um, in its essence, is it looks very simple. It's like you present a vehicle to a, a customer, you do all the bits you need to do. The customer says yes, and you do the paperwork you need to do to get the thing sold. Great, okay. But there's a whole series of things that happen both um, either end of that process. So getting the vehicles in, getting the parts exchanges out, all that sort of stuff is is core to what current uh, to Cox do. And so bringing more of that sort of stuff <clears throat> into the journey, I think, is going to be really important. But then you've also got, everyone thinks about happy path, which is happy path means, you know, if everything goes singingly and smoothly and, you know, they, 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 you know they've got, they're in this scenario, then we'll be able to deliver it. And what we're keen to do is, what about all of the plethora of other scenarios that happen where, you know, you need to cope with those? And I think building those into the solution is really important as well. So, yeah, we're super, super excited about what we can do. No, brilliant. It certainly sounds it. And, uh, and I'm mindful of time, as, as always, with, with these. They, it just flies past when we start talking about, about the industry and about brands and, and what's happening. But I think in, in terms of time allowing, just, just the final word, I, Darren, I'd love to give to you, please. Um, you know, we've, we've obviously got, you know, two great leaders that lead brands that, that, that sit within Coxivite and, and your remit. In terms of that, um, different markets are, are all on the digital retail journey, but moving at slightly different paces. What's your view in terms of either from a Cox Automotive perspective or indeed the wider market in terms of innovations? Are there, are there, are there other stages to come on this journey that you can see that, that, that you know, is, is we're going to be facing with our customers? For, for sure. I mean, uh, nothing stands still. That's the one thing that's uh, a constant these days. And if you think about the market dynamics we're operating in, we've just got a number of uh, variables that are continuing to drive change. You've got the EV volumes and the growth in the market penetration of uh, electric vehicles, what's that going to do to our, our retailers? 
we've got stock availability that's a live challenge here today, um, not only within the UK, but across um, the globe, really, driven by, uh, you know, other, other challenges, uh, the chip shortage as an example. You've got market disruptors, you've got new retail models coming in, Kazoo and the likes uh, entering this space. You've got OEMs and a talk of an agency model. You've got consumer demand ultimately that's really driving change and uh, consumer behavior moving forward. For me, it, in simple terms, it's about really narrowing down and creating that seamless digital retail journey for, for vehicles. Uh, no, no further thinking about new or use. It's vehicles, simple as that. Um, and I think that's the thing that we should really be focused in on. How do we make that as seamless as possible for a consumer so that they can uh, search for, find, finance, buy, um, subscribe to, you know, rent, uh, any kind of vehicle um, that they wish. And if we can make that really seamless, really easy, then I think we're going to win. So that's the focus for us, uh, I would say. Fantastic. Well, that's a great summary. Lots, as you say, I think all of you have said in your, your own relevant pieces that you know, there's a lot of change, but a lot of exciting times ahead and wish you and the teams you know, all, all the luck in, in, in terms of that. So, uh, gents, all it leaves me to say is thank you so much for your time. I know it's incredibly precious. So, Darren, Didier and, uh, and Roland, thank you so much for your time and your insights. And, and uh, you know, to our audience, we hope you found the content useful as ever. Uh, if it's interesting and valuable, give us a like or a thumbs up. It helps other people find the content. And if there's anything else you'd like us to focus on, uh, I'd probably say no more than three people, please, to, to, to interview. But it's been, you know, gone remarkably well. But if you'd like to, us to focus on anything in the future, so please drop us a message through social media. Uh, we're Top Supplies Europe are on uh, Facebook, LinkedIn. So you, you won't struggle to find us. And thank you for tuning in to Fuel Sport and stay safe. Yeah.